So, so far we've looked at some sedimentary structures. Now we're going to start looking on a broader, larger scale at, you know, instead of beds and little structures that are, you know, inches or feet across, we're going to look at whole rock units and the contacts between them. A contact is where one rock unit touches another rock unit. It's in contact with it. And there are three basic types of contacts. There's a depositional contact. This is when sediment is deposited on rock that was already there. So that sediment is touching, it's contacting the rock that it is deposited on. The second type is a fault contact. This is when two different rocks are touching, are contacting, because a fault occurred, moved the rock, breaking it, and now that rock is touching something else. And then there's an intrusive contact. This is when some igneous rock is melted and intrudes into an area and then cools off, solidifies back into rock, and now it's touching whatever it intruded into. So here's an example of depositional contact. You can see these layers here sitting on top of these layers here and this is sedimentary rock so it was deposited on the other rock. So that is a depositional contact. Here we have a fault contact. The blue line indicates the fault and this rock is contacting this rock and it's not the same. You know this is yellowish white and this is reddish brown. This is reddish as a yellowish white. This used to be right here. It was continuous. The fault broke it and moved it. Now it's in contact with something else. Here's an intrusive contact. This igneous dike actually igneous sill, sorry about that, um, I'll explain the difference in a few minutes. This igneous sill is here between the sedimentary rocks above and below it. Now these contacts can be further divided into conformable and unconformable. Basically this is talking about time. If it's conformable there's no gap. First we had sand deposited and then right afterwards we had mud deposited because you know it was a turbidite. That's conformable. Unconformable means there was a gap. It could be 50 years, it could be 50 million years. There is a gap in the sequence. It's like looking at a calendar and the month of May has been torn out. It's gone. It's unconformable. There are four types of these unconformable contacts or unconformities as the general term. The four types are disconformity, angular unconformity, nonconformity, and buttress unconformity. These are important terms, not just because they're on the test, which they are, but mostly because all geologists recognize and understand these terms 
And so when you're reading about stuff or talking to another geologist, or if you're not a geologist, you're an engineer, but you're talking to a geologist, they can be using these terms and it's important to know what they're talking about. A disconformity is a type of unconformity where the layers above and below are still parallel to each other. So no tilting, no folding, no faulting has occurred, just erosion. The erosion surface may or may not be parallel. It may be bumpy like the one drawn here. It may be almost a horizontal line parallel to the bedding surfaces. Either way, the layers above and below are parallel to each other. But there is a gap in time. Erosion occurred. The fact that the beds above and below are still parallel to each other makes this the most difficult to recognize out in the field. So when you're looking at rocks, it may look like nothing strange had happened, yet you could be missing a hundred million years of rock in the sequence. We'll talk in a few minutes about how you can figure that out. How do we know there's a hundred million years missing? But for now, this is the disconformity. Here's an example. There is a bunch of rock that was eroded. A whole bunch of the calendar is gone. Looking at it, you can't tell. It looks like just a bunch of continuous rock. Angular unconformities are much easier to recognize. Even in this drawing, you can see why. On one side of the contact, the rock has beds at some angle. On the other side of the contact, it's at a different angle, in this case, horizontal. They could be both at some angle as long as it's not a matching angle. We've got folded beds underneath and just nice horizontal deposition above. So that contact is an angular unconformity. We know time is missing. At some point after the folding, there had to be erosion because those folds are incomplete. Those curves are missing their tops. So during that whole period of erosion, there's no record. All of those months are torn out of the calendar. This indicates both a tectonic disturbance and erosion. The erosion had to come after the tectonic disturbance. Here's the most famous example of an angular unconformity in the whole world. This photo should become very familiar to you. If you've taken Geology 101 or something like that, you've probably already seen this photo or other photos of this spot. This is Sicker Point in Scotland, known as Hutton's Epiphany, or where Hutton had his epiphany. This is where the whole concept of deep geologic time was first realized. He came here year after year and noticed that even though the ocean waves were beating on the area, it barely changed. But he also noticed that all of this rock down here in the bottom looked like nice parallel layers almost vertical. Then above it, it was all this rock in nice parallel layers, but tilted. And a whole bunch of it is gone and eroded. But in the years that he visited, 
this Oceanside location, he didn't see large chunks of rock eroding away. So he realized that erosion had to take a long time. He didn't see anything tilting. So tilting must take a long time. And this stuff had to get there and then tilt and then erode. And then this stuff get there and then tilt and then erode. And when he saw sand on the beach, it wasn't immediately turning into rock. So in each of these cases, it had to get deposited and then have time to turn into a rock before the tilting and the eroding. And it just boggled his mind how long this had to have taken. That was the discovery of deep geologic time. Nonconformity. This is a place where the contact is between crystalline rock, something uh, igneous or metamorphic, touching sedimentary rock. This is like your vegetables touching your potatoes. You know, it's two different kinds of rock touching each other. Almost always this happens where you had the crystalline rock and there was erosion and then at some point the sedimentary rock was deposited on top. That's where the gap in time comes from. In very rare cases there can be negligible erosion if you have for example a volcanic eruption and basalt flows out over a wide plain and then flows into the water, covers the shoreline, and then the next day there's a storm and sediment starts landing on that rock. That's an extreme rare example and it's even likely that the sediment that got deposited there doesn't stay until it's lithified. Probably that basalt gets eroded for quite a while and sea level has to rise enough to continuously cover it with sediment that can at some point become lithified. So here's an example of a non-conformity from the Grand Canyon again probably the most famous example below the orange line is crystalline rock there's the Zoroaster granite and uh, so um, I'm not sure whether this is the Zoroaster granite or the other uh, metamorphic rock that makes up the base of the Grand Canyon but above it is all sedimentary rock. So this contact is between different rock types. Sedimentary on igneous or on crystalline bedrock. And then the last type is a buttress unconformity. This is a special version of either the disc conformity or the non-conformity. And it's special because there's an actual like topography, you know, hills and valleys that are completely buried. So it's not just a slightly wavy, bumpy surface. There are whole hills and valleys that then get completely covered in sediment. So this takes a lot of deposition. But eventually it can be exposed so in a, a you know because of road or a, a mountain uplift and then road cuts going through the mountains we can sometimes see this here's an example of a buttress unconformity